My name is Myron Scaife, and I started in the Mission Township Police Department in April 14, 1954. And our boundaries were 47th Street on the north, 111th Street on the south, State Line, and Antioch. And out of that, you would carve uh, the city of Mission, and Prairie Village, and Fairway, and Roland Park, because they and they had all been organized. I never thought growing up that I wanted to be a police officer. I went to work uh, for the Wyandotte County Sheriff's Office. I liked working with people. I did not like the politics of the Sheriff's Office. I left uh, the Sheriff's Office and went to work for the Santa Fe Railroad. I was uh, a railroad detective, and that was a good job, except that you moved around a lot. I heard about Mission Township uh, wanting to hire people, so I, uh, I applied and, and uh, was, was accepted. As the area was developing, uh, there were sections of the township that were being developed and uh, the streets were being built, homes were being constructed, and then Prairie Village would annex, or Mission would annex it, uh, Leewood would annex it. Uh, so it was a very unstable situation until uh, the politicians decided that enough was enough, I guess. There were enough people and there was enough tax base. They, uh, decided to create the city of Overland Park. There were about 20,000 people in the area when the city was created. We had uh, uh, a nightstick, uh, a baton, uh, we had a shotgun, and then you had your sidearm. Uh, the sidearm was a 38. Uh, a lot different than what it is today. And, uh, uh, the environment uh, the, of the community was a lot different than what you have today. The job, uh, I believe, was a lot safer and much easier than what the police officers have today. We had uh, three cars. They were uh, Pontiacs. We had a siren that fit on the fender of the car. They were pretty heavy and, and uh, they were bolted to the fender they would eventually shake loose and cause problems. And they were mechanical sirens. They weren't the electrical sirens that you have today. If you took that car down to uh, uh, a farm where there were cattle, and if you hit the siren, just barely touch the siren and get it to go on, it would attract the cattle. <laughs> and the, and the, the cattle would, uh, I, I guess they thought that was a mating call. Uh, but it was, it was funny to watch uh, the, the cattle when you do that. We had uh, one car on duty to do all the patrolling. Some days you were very busy, other days uh, not so much. Eventually, uh, the department grew and there were, uh, there were more officers hired and a second car was put on. Following that, of course, uh, there were uh, third districts and fourth districts and, uh, as population grew and it was necessary to employ more officers. Ben Castillo was there uh, for a year. Uh, following uh, his tenure as the chief, uh, John Kenyon, uh, who had come to work, uh, was promoted uh, to the job of the chief. Then uh, in 1963, uh, I was uh, uh, 
sent to the uh, Southern Police Institute uh, and returned, uh, was promoted to captain, eventually uh, assistant chief. I eventually was selected as the chief, and that, that was in 1971. Well, I served until I retired in 1995. Tw 24 years I was the chief. There were a number of stories, and one of them, uh, of course, was the death of Deanna Rose. The only police officer that was killed uh, while I was there. There was a very difficult time. Uh, she was uh, very talented and uh, uh, had great potential. Uh, so, because of that, it was it was it was just not only her death, but it was uh, a great loss because of there were there were going to be opportunities for her to grow, and uh, that was taken away. Very difficult times, but there were. Uh, other times uh, that were very difficult. Uh, one was the bank robbery by Henry Floyd Brown. The police department at that time was on the top floor of the city hall building. I was in the office uh, uh, unpacking boxes, uh, putting stuff away uh, in the desk and all. and. Uh, there was an explosion, and I, I actually thought it was a sonic boom. I got to looking around, and uh, the north end of the city hall uh, was damaged. And uh, I went downstairs, and uh, the, the north end uh, uh, on the lower level had been blown away. It turned out that uh, uh, it was a diversion for a robbery at the Metcalf Bank at 79th and Metcalf. Bill Batt, uh, who eventually became a police officer, was working inside uh, the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise, which he and his family owned, uh, which is next door to the Metcalf Bank. Uh, he saw these people coming out of the bank with guns. He took down the license number, and uh, the alarm came in uh, about the robbery. Uh, Chet Sunby was an officer. Chet was on the motorcycle that day, got behind the car that uh, Henry Floyd Brown and uh, Gibson were in. Gibson was driving. Uh, Brown had uh, a rifle in inside the car. Uh, fired out the back window of that automobile and struck Chet Sumby and, and knocked him down. They then uh, went to uh, intersection of 71st and Santa Fe and robbed a woman, a lady and her son of uh, their car, uh, used it as a getaway. An individual at Heatherwood Apartment, uh, about 30 minutes later, saw that car backing in. He called in. We cornered uh, Henry Floyd Brown and, and Gibson uh, in an apartment and uh, had a gunfight. And uh, uh, Brown was shot. Gibson got away. Uh, and to this day, I can't tell you how he got away, but uh, uh, he got away. But uh, in the uh, in the gunfight that ensued, uh, uh, Sergeant Eldon Miller of the Highway Patrol was shot and killed. We eventually got uh, Brown out of there, and he was wounded and taken to Shawnee Mission Hospital. He was a part of the Minutemen organization. Uh, the Minutemen organization was concerned about uh, communism taking over the country 
government was uh, out of control and they were gonna fight the government and they were gonna take the country back. He were to do this today, we would call him a terrorist. We did not call him a terrorist at the time. Through the years, uh, developed a, uh, a reputation in the law enforcement community throughout the country as, as being very progressive. I think we were the first department in uh, Johnson County to employ uh, uh, African American. Uh, I don't know if we were the first one to hire a female, but. Uh, we, we hired female very early on, and uh, so we, and we hired Hispanics. We had uh, developed a, a staff uh, that was very diverse, and uh, it, it made for great working relationships uh, in the community. Uh, we, we had great rapport with uh, the community, I thought, with uh, the population. had uh, a good working relationship uh, with the fire department. Uh, now there's, you know, in many cities there's rivalries between the, the, the police and the fire. In Overland Park, we were always able to uh, cooperate uh, with each other. They thought I was tough, but they knew what the rules were. They, they, they knew what they could do and they knew what they could not do. I was very proud to be associated with the, uh, the police department. Uh, and it was because of the people that we had. Very proud 